Invaders from Mars in 1953 was the first independent science fiction film made. Directed by William Cameron Menzies and produced by Edward Alperson, Invaders from Mars was one of the most cinematic and visually satisfying science fiction films of the 1950s and was unlike any science fiction film seen at that time and was the first example of aliens infiltrating our society, threatening our very well-being and livelihood. The 1956 film Invasion of the Body Snatchers would follow suit adding to the genre. Invaders from Mars is the story of a 12-year-old boy, David, who is awakened one night during a thunderstorm. He looks out of his bedroom window, only to see a flying saucer descend and land in the sandpit area behind his home. After, he rushes to tell his parents about what he saw. His father goes to investigate and goes missing for a while, only to return later that morning. David notices that his father has changed and is not the loving and caring man he once was, acting cold, angry and hostile. He also notices an unusual red puncture on the lower part of his father's neck. David also starts to see a change in some of the townspeople. David is placed under the protection of Dr. Blake, who actually believes his story. David and Dr. Blake get help from Dr. Kelston, an astronomer who calls in the military under the command of Colonel Fielding, investigating the sandpit area and surrounding it. While standing near the search area, Dr. Blake and David are suddenly sucked underground and captured in the tunnels by tall mutant slaves and taken into the flying saucer. Colonel Fielding and his troops, along with Dr. Kelston, find a way into the tunnels to rescue Dr. Blake and David. They all escape to the surface, immediately evacuating the area with the army firing heavy artillery on the sandpit. Suddenly, after the explosion, David wakes up, running to his parents' room. The parents reassure him it was all just a bad dream, telling him to go back to sleep. As he returns to his bedroom, more loud thunder is heard, with David looking out the window, only to see a saucer descending into the sand. Invaders from Mars was originally based on the story treatment by writer John Tucker Battle, who was inspired to write the story after his wife woke him up early one morning to recount a very vivid and disturbing dream she had of Martians invading Earth. He began to develop the rest of the story and developed one of the first science fiction scripts in the 50s, with the revised version of the script completed in September of 1950, with the screenplay written by Arthur Gardner and Jules Levy. The film was rushed into production, but was held back and put on hold by the studio. Producer Edward Alperson made the brilliant decision to put the entire project into the hands of legendary production designer and director William Cameron Menzies. Menzies was known for practically inventing the concept of production design and was known for elevating the visual look of many films from the Thief of Baghdad to Gone with the Wind. Menzies directed several films, including the science fiction film Things to Come. For the role of David, they cast child actor Jimmy Hunt, who had starred in a number of films, including Sorry Wrong Number and Weekend with Father. Uh, I started acting when I was six years old, and that was back in 1946. There was a movie called High Barbary, and it was with uh, Van Johnson and uh, June Allison, and I played the part of Van Johnson as a little boy. I made 40 movies, and the, my favorite of all the 40 movies was a movie called Lone Hand with Joel McRae. And my other favorite movie, of course, has got to be Invaders from Mars, because they still remember me from that movie. Half of Friends, known for his role in the K-Mutiny, was cast as Dr. Stuart Kelston, with Helena Carter in her final film role, cast as Dr. Patricia Blake. Leif Erickson played David's father, George McLean, with Hilary Brooke as the mother, Mary McLean. Morris Ankrum plays Colonel Fielding, with Milburn Stone as Army Captain Roth. Stone would later play Doc Adams on the long-running Western TV series, Gunsmoke. Other notable actors included Barbara Billingsley, 
who is known to audiences as Mrs. Cleaver in the classic TV series Leave It to Beaver. Todd Carnes makes an appearance as Jim, the gas station attendant. Audiences may remember Carnes as Harry Bailey in the beloved classic It's a Wonderful Life. The Martian Head in the Glass Globe is played by Luce Potter who also acted as one of the Munchkins in The Wizard of Oz. For years, she had received letters from fans telling her that she had scared them as a kid. Incidentally, Locke Martin, the 7 foot 7 inch tall actor who plays a mutant Martian guard in the movie, also played one of the most iconic movie robots, Gort, in the film The Day the Earth Stood Still. Invaders from Mars would go into production in 1952 at Republic Picture Studios. Invaders from Mars was a low budget science fiction feature and actually was the first science fiction feature filmed in color which makes great use of vibrant greens, blues and reds and was filmed in the three color super cine color process. The film was planned in great detail. Director and production designer William Cameron Menzies had 12 notebooks made up of storyboards depicting every scene shot by shot. Originally it was confirmed that the film would be shot in 3D, but it was discovered that there were no 3D cameras available at the time. Interesting to note that the film has that otherworldly third dimensional look to it. Sets on the film were carefully designed. Dr. Wilson's lab was in fact redressed to double as the set of the police station. The look and design of the sandpit set was truly groundbreaking, owing a lot to the amazing cinematography of John Zeitz, who was a master at creating atmosphere in films, making great use of shadows and looming close-ups. Special effects head Jack Cosgrove made heavy use of matte paintings to cut down on costs. The Martian heat ray effect showing the bubbling melting walls of the tunnels was created by shooting a large tub of boiling oatmeal from above which was colored with red food coloring and lit with red lights. The tunnel walls were created firstly by using inflated balloons pinned to the walls. The effects crew decided to use inflated condoms which actually looked far more convincing. So the crew inflated more than 3,000 condoms for the tunnel set walls. Due to the film's low budget, the costumes for the plush velour Martian jumpsuits were cheaply made, practically overnight. The zippers on the jumpsuits look pretty obvious on film. Interesting to note that in one scene, Dr. Kelston talks about the Lubbock lights which were in fact real-life UFO events that created a nationwide sensation in their day. At the end of the film, there is a unique montage of earlier scenes superimposed over David's face as he runs for his life. After this scene, a new series of superimposed images begins, now playing in reverse. These odd visions eventually dissolve into a starscape of planets the scene shifts with a clap of thunder, with a final explosion that breaks the montage and David is restored to his bedroom and awakes from his dream. During a preview screening, this strange ending scene received an enthusiastic response, even though the audience was baffled by the scene. In the UK, the British film distributor complained that the film was too short and the dream narrative needed to go. The producer therefore needed to shoot new footage to lengthen the observatory sequence with the dream narrative totally changed. With the dream versus reality, was it all just a nightmare element removed? Instead, the scene is changed to David running towards Dr. Kelston and Dr. Blake behind an army tank with the Martian saucer exploding as it takes off. With Dr. Blake assuring David that his parents are safe now. The original cut was played on TV during the 1960s in black and white. During the early 70s, it played in color and disappeared in the mid to late 70s. There was a number of cuts and edits of the film. Prints of the alternate British ending began to circulate in the late 70s. The TV version had the original ending, 
but also included the reshot scenes from the British cut. The music score was created by Raoul Crusher, who had worked on creating music for feature films from the 1940s until the 1950s. His works included various music scores for a number of television shows. According to the Encyclopedia of Film Composers, most of the score is rumoured to be the work of Republic composer Mort Klickman. The score for Invaders from Mars is a truly unique score, which makes great use of choir music, which acts as an eerie sound effect for the film. The film was distributed by 20th Century Fox and received generally positive reviews, with the New York Times describing the film as strictly entertainment for youngsters, calling it a pictorial funny book that would probably frighten witless a lot of small children. Harrison's reports called it a pretty good science fiction melodrama, describing the story as highly imaginative and packed with suspense from start to finish. The Southern California Motion Picture Council would warn that the film is weird and terrifying, but well done. Invaders from Mars is now considered to be one of the best 1950s alien invasion films and is one of the most influential science fiction films ever made. An underrated remake was created in 1986 and was directed by legendary horror director Toby Hooper. The remake had some amazing effects but was a box office failure. The original film's actor, Jimmy Hunt, who played David, even appears in the film playing a police chief. There was even a three-issue Invaders from Mars comic book adaptation of the film, written in 1990, plus a three-issue sequel in 1991. Invaders from Mars is an underrated science fiction classic, and was brilliantly directed by William Cameron Menzies, who was a true master of production design. It's a shame there isn't a fully restored remastered edition with both versions of the film on Blu-ray. The film has an amazing visual energy to it that is truly unique for an alien invasion film. I really enjoyed revisiting this classic film. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like what you see on my channel and would like to support me on Patreon, Click on the link below.